doctor if you've been uh, encountering errors and various ones. Lines. So I'll ask a question, and most of them are multiple choice, and I expect you to shout out the answer you think is right. If you're too embarrassed to shout out, just think of an answer in your head and, and see how many you get right. Pretty simple. I represent the that I'd like to represent six values, but ASCII only defines meanings for the first 128 uh, number. So that's 0 to 127. And it's very convenient for English speakers. Um, A simplified history of how things happened is that different manufacturers developed different encodings or one character for a bike. But they're all incompatible. Standards solve all of these problems, and it succeeds in solving most of them. Um, and it defines Last 
Yeah, little, el little engine means the little one comes at the end. So the least significant byte goes at the end. That's not what it normally means. No, it doesn't normally mean that at all. Okay, well, I've tested this little out. Little engine is that the least, the least significant comes that, first. That is what would normally no, the other <laughs> big engine. Big engine. Big engine. Where if someone's got a laptop out, they can find this out, look it up on Wikipedia or something. And we can come back to this. But I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, so UTF-32 can handle all of these. But visual appearance of letters or characters or whatever. And it's the font that determines how a glyph appears. And this is a very rough definition. And if you're a font designer, you probably have one definition for glyph than if you're a coral programmer. But that's roughly what a glyph is. So for a font designer, for example, that is a single glyph because the F and I are just merged together. But so it's not a So the point of this is try to avoid the term
this one acts immediately to the bike. There's a unit, uh, there's a code point called, um, I forget its official name, but its value is E0, and that's called a precomposed uh, character, which has, it's an A and an uh, accent on it. But you can also do the same thing with two code points. You can have lowercase a, and then a combining character which represents uh, an actor. And you can have several uh, combining characters. So here is lowercase a, and the combining character, uh, and the underlying, it's not really underlying, it's a special combining character. And even what combining characters that affect um, the, the code point before it and the code point after here you've got A followed by a special line that follows A. And um, you can the friend of it here like this. It's going to be correct. The two A's are supposed to look identical. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> that's something to be aware of. All right. So that's the bare minimum that you need to know about Unicode. Um, part two is Perl, which is the bulk of my talk. So here's my definition for a string. <laughs> it's a sequence of string elements. And I'm very careful not to say bytes or code points. Uh, I prefer to use the term string element because it avoids having to sign between them. <laughs> yeah, typically in Perl, in, in Perl documentation too, we do call them characters. Yeah, but so if, if anyone here reads documentation, <laughs> which I think at least some of us do, um, <laughs> then you should know that, that what you're calling a string element is called a character, so just to end, end the confusion over there. Yes, and, that's, and that's, that, that's one of the problems with using the term character, is mm -hmm. some people don't realize there are multiple definitions yeah. and use it. Some people do realize there are multiple definitions, but still use it. Yeah. And, it's, um, and people can go into long arguments about what a character is, but let's just avoid that term. Um, so I am doing that. I'm using the term string element. And a string element has an integer of numerical value that's greater than or equal to zero. And to specify a single string element by its numerical value, you can use the back x notation. You can also use back, backslash uh, octal numbers. And the, but backslash x is the field. And you can follow backslash x String element, you can use a substring, uh, substring uh, built-in function. If you want to get the integer value of a string element, you use the ORD um, built-in function. So the 6 1 hex is 97. And length returns the number of string elements. What does those two lines of code print? Is it one? Does it, so you've got the string here of three string elements, right? We're agreed. Those are three string elements. Um, so it could either print each the value of each string element, 0, 255, 256, or maybe, because this doesn't fit in a single byte, it expands it using the UTF-8 algorithm. Or maybe since this doesn't fit in a single byte, it expands all of it using this UTF-8 algorithm, in which case you'd get this. Or maybe it depends on something. Um, or maybe none of these answers are correct. And by the way, those hex, 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 um, hex numbers do correspond to those decimal numbers. But it's not a trick question in that sense. <laughs> so you think one? It should be one. It cool. might be four. If your previous four. slide was correct, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the correct answer is one. It always prints that. And I thought for a long time that it depended on the UTF-8 flag, but actually it doesn't. And I'll go on to explain what the UTF-8 flag is. But running Perl does keep string elements um, uh, intact. It doesn't expand them using UTF-8. So you can have string elements that are greater than 256. Perl can handle that. 
fine. So in practice, we have two, we can use strings in two ways. We can either use them as character strings or code point strings, or we can use them as byte strings. So a character string is a string that's rep meant to represent text, what you'd normally use a string for, and, and that's a sequence of code points. And if it was up to me, I'd call it a code point string, but that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and the values allowed for, so a, a string can be a character string if it has all of its string elements are between zero and infinity, so, or follow the Unicode standard. So a character string is a string composed of code points, but, but, but all strings are composed of characters, according to his definition in the manual, which is why you're not using the word character in yeah. the way that the manual does. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to avoid the word character. <laughs> Except but I'm not avoiding the term character string because I think that's quite uh, that's not ambiguous. Okay, a text string. I'll, I'll next time. A byte string represents data, and following the object string, and any sequence of As far as Perl is concerned, they're both just strings composed of string elements. It's up to you to keep track of whether those string elements are bytes or code points. So how about this? Is this a character string or a byte string? Yes, it is a character string. We can determine it's a character string by process of elimination, right? Because it can't possibly be a byte string, because this value is greater than 255. So there are in certain cases where you can, by process of elimination, deduce that it's a character string. Um, but if it, except for this case, you can't find out. Mm -hmm. All right. And to co convert a character string into a byte string, you do an operation called encoding. And to convert a byte string into a character string, you do an operation called encoding. special things with new lines depending on whether you're on Windows or Unix. So if you specify raw, you're saying, I always want the device, I don't care whether I'm on Windows or, or Windows. Writing binary files is a very similar process. Uh, just change that to new print, and you can still use the raw ion layer. If this string, which is supposed to be a byte string, if by accident you pass it character in, and one of these elements is greater than 255, then you'll get a warning. And by the way, you always going to be
In this scope, the file is suddenly encoded in UJ date, and outside of the scope, the file isn't encoded in UJ date, which makes no sense, so don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of problems people have is um, they find everything very confusing, it's because in their text editor thinks their source code is in UJ date, and so displays it properly, but Perl actually thinks that that text file isn't in UJ is, isn't in UJ date. And you get all these if you just fix this, a lot of debugging um, will become a lot easier. All right, another question. Where is the bug? Okay. No, it's not multiple choice. <laughs> there might be more than one bug, there might not be a bug. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the answer, one of the answers. Yes. Okay, that's one of the answers. So, what nobody mentioned that it assumes that file name is encoded in UTFA. That might not be true. You need to check that. It might be a valid assumption, it might not be. But that is a potential bug. It assumes, which was mentioned, that the terminal expects UTF-8 on, on the output, which might or might not be true. No, I mean, your... What does, what does the thing that's reading STD out from your program expect? Does it expect UTF-8 or does it expect something else? Right. And the third... Um, a bug is that it incorrectly assumes that SDD out bin mode can handle wide string elements. And wide string elements means that a string element is greater than 200. So to fix this, you could do uh, bin mode SDD out encoding UTF-8, assuming that whatever's reading your SDD out wants UTF-8. So technically, you're supposed to check the, the locale environment variables. 
um, and print and find the right the right encoding that is expected. But in practice, I found most Unix applications, modern Unix applications, just print and UTF-8, and there are very few uh, applications that expect anything else. So in practice, you can get away with just doing this. Thin mode SDL encoding UTF-8. And if you know that the file is encoding UTF-8, you can then print it out, and you won't get the, the wide character and print warning. All right. This is the part where we get to the UTF-8 flag. Alright. Perl in memory, like all programs on the computer, everything is just device. The Perl store contents of uh, our other screen and secrets of device, like the computer. And it also has to make the for each string uh, as a flag. One of the flags is 